What's up? I got another comparison video between the GMC 122 Gemini combo and the Korg SV1 with these super slick reverse keys. Uh, the Korg SV1, it came out about 2009. It is a very piano focused controller with weighted keys, more emphasis on the piano sounds. There's no organ control parameters. So it's not really in competition with the DMC, which is very obviously modeled after a Hammond B3, but Krumar slash GSI does make a piano-focused controller. That's the Krumar 7. So a lot of these sounds are going to be the same, and we'll talk about how the, the two compare. So you can't quite see it, but the SV1 has this nifty little feature. Let me see if I can turn my camera here a little bit. There's a built-in tube amp, uh, preamp. So it seemed a little unfair to have that on the SV1 and not have a preamp on the DMC. So I'm using this Vox amp that uses the same kind of preamp, this same Korg tube preamp. There it is. We'll start with the Rhodes, which is the big focus and kind of what the SV1 is known for. There's six roads on here. We're just going to start with them all without any amp or effects and then we'll add some amp and effects in a minute here. Here's roads two. Number four. And number six. Let's add a little bit of some of the effects. So there's a compressor that gives it a real bite here at the beginning. And there's an amp. I've turned on amp one which tends to be, in my experience, the best amp. Here it is with that first road sound. There's a boost on here. And then if you really want to boost it, you can crank up the drive on the amp. There's several different amps uh, that I feel like they're all different flavors of distortion other than that first one. These all just have a hair of drive, but obviously as you turn them up, they get crazier and crazier. And 
number two, and we'll try some of that U vibe with amp number four and just a hair of the drive. This U vibe is a cool sound. It's a it's kind of like a phaser. It sounds a bit like the Rotovibe pedal. <laughs> Here's some tremolo on three without the amp modeling. a second set of effects over here to the right. So here's a phaser. That's on three. Let's now hear some chorus on that first Rhodes with a bit of tremolo. Here is the first of the eight roads on the Gemini. It's called Whirlish. No amp modeling, no effects. Here's piano bass on the Gemini. Here's Sweet, one of the more uh, uh, higher range, tinkly ones. They've got this muted one called Prepared. that's on there. Here's So Dark. Here's the Dino. Hard times. Mellow tone. And default E piano, the best of all worlds. Here's the default E piano through a JCM amp with just a hair of drive. tremolo. This 
switch over to the mellow tone roads. This amp is an AC. There's lots of tremolo again, but a little smoother in the contrast. <laughs> Finally, here's So Dark with uh, some distortion on that JCM amp. Here's the second set of electric panels on the Korg SV-1, starting with a couple of Wurlitzers, no amps, no effects here. This third one, I believe, is meant to be a honer, I think, an electro piano or a pianet. And we've got the classic CX3. This one actually has chorus on. The next preset, I believe, is the same thing without the chorus. We have a little 80s wedding here. Here's that first Wurlitzer on the Korg with some amp and a lot of tremolo. Here's that Honer Pianet with some compressor, a little intense, a little amp drive. Here's the Wurlitzer with no effects at all on the Gemini. Here it is with an RJC amp and a lot of tremolo. Here's the 
is the CX-3 on the Gemini, no amp. Here's the digital e-piano, the 80s wedding, on the Gemini. Sadly, the Gemini doesn't have any of the honers. It doesn't have the pianet, which is too bad. I'd love to hear what they did with it. But it has uh, another sampled digital piano from the 80s. This is a Roland. Sounds cool. Clav, we've got four selections on the Korg and then some presets beyond that. I think the four are meant to replicate the original pickup registers, but they don't have the EQ switch modeling. The Korg has three EQ knobs right here that do the work for you. So this is, I think, meant to be the lower pickup CA with some bass, mid, and the treble turned down. Is the second setting, which is probably meant to be DA, the upper pickup. <laughs> Here's the next setting, probably meant to be DB, both pickups. And the final setting, probably meant to be DA, the little uh, chicken picking, or CB, yeah. Whichever the one was that's out of phase. Let's put on, I like to put on this compressor and turn it up. Because of this weird pop at the beginning. Put on the first amp and put on some drive. Let's go back, let's go back to the first pickup and you can hear the auto wah here. Couple of phasers here. We'll go to the third setting and turn up the depth a bit. Got a second phaser. And a flanger, which is cool. And that U vibe, that's the uh, roto vibe ish phaser, sounds very good with the clav. <laughs> Here 
here's the DMC's clav without any effects on it, starting in the lower pickup, the CA, with uh, all the modeled EQ switches are out. I'll show you in a minute what it sounds like when you alternate through them. Let's move along to C, B, which is the upper pickup. Here's D, B, both pickups. Here we're going to go for DA, which is the out of phase one, I believe. These model EQ switches allow you to get a lot more variation in the sound. For instance, we'll drop out the medium from this little out of phase one. It sounds very, very sharp. We'll drop the treble out of the lower pickup and it'll sound sort of very smooth. Here's a bass amp to add a little bit of growl and some tremolo. Just turn up the drive a little bit. This is that same lower pickup with all the switches on except for treble. Now, of course, let's go to the wah, turn off the tremolo. In this case, this is a pedal wah. Here's the phaser. I'm going to put it into DB and pull out all the EQ switches. There's six acoustic pianos on the chord, so we'll start with the first one here. Number three. 
That was really sloppy, but you get the idea. Number four. Number five. I believe that in some of the other sound packs for the Korg, there's some acoustic pianos with strings layered, but you can't layer here on the board. Oh, here's that last one with some chorus added. Turn the intensity way up. Here is uh, the comp, the compressor. The intensity is at about five. And here's number three, which was one of the more uh, punchy ones with that compressor added to make it really punchy. So the Gemini has a number of sampled pianos and they've just added a really detailed digitally modeled one. So I'll show you the samples real quick. Here's the GSI Grand D. Here's the Bright Piano. Here's the upright piano. We got some piano and strings is one of the options here. And a honky tonky. But they've recently added this much more complex engine called the Venice Grand. You'll immediately hear how this is uh has a lot more body to it.
This also has all of Gemini's pianos have the settings here in the online editor uh, assigned to the draw bars. So I'm going to yank out the velocity a little harder and push in the piano harp a little bit to make this a little punchier. Also adjust the LFO if you want to get even more atmospheric. The Korg has some sampled organs, very, very perfunctory stuff, but worth hearing at least. I think the first four or so are meant to be a B3. And then there's a Vox and a Lowry console organ. So here's the B3s. <laughs> I believe this is supposed to be the Vox here. Vox here. And the last one I think is supposed to be a Lowry console organ, like the one um, that the band used. There is an organ amp in the amp options, and there is, in case you didn't hear it, an attempt at a Leslie simulator. It sounds really bad. But overall, just the organ sounds are not great. The DMC, of course, is famous for a great, great organ. So you don't really need me to tell you that, but I'll play some of those settings that they were attempting to replicate up here anyway.
the DMC's Vox. We'll do without an amp to start with. Here's what that Vox sounds like with an RJC amp and a little drive. And we'll make it a little more nasal too. And some vibrato. Overall, the Gemini definitely takes it. Now, maybe this could beat it in the realm of acoustic pianos, because I did feel like there were a few more options here with a little more body. The Gemini seems to have just those sampled ones that feel a bit thin, and then the Venice Grand, which you can manipulate to try and create several different, more full-bodied sounds. And the roads are pretty good on the Korg. You would probably be happy with either one. But the Korg really just only has barely an attempt at the other sounds. The Wurlitzer on the Gemini is really, uh, has a lot of character, has a lot of flavor. It feels you hear lots and lots of different um, intonations in the reeds. The clavinet is the same way. The clavinet here, oh, it drives me a little nuts. It sounds very uh, twangy, ducky, and sampled. And that's, that's what a lot of people will go for when they're trying to re replicate a clav is just something sort of twangy and ducky and they miss a lot of the more complex stuff in there. Clav has a very, actually a very extensive sound palette uh, and it has a really nice kind of flat warm feeling under that initial ducky twang. I could talk about clavs all day. And of course the organ sounds here are only perfunctory. They don't compare to anything that GSI does. I did think the Vox was a little better than I expected here, and the Lowry organ and the Honer uh, Pianet or Electric Piano, whichever one it is, it was a nice touch. I would have loved to see those on the Gemini as well. So like I said, these two aren't really in competition. This is very much modeled after a B3. There's 20 draw bars and unweighted keys. This is very much a stage piano. It's weighted keys. They have a piano feel. But Krumar makes the Krumar 7, which is very similar to the Korg SV-1. It's 73 keys, hammer action, and it looks kind of cool and vintage. The SV-1 comes with this bonus 2 preamp. Uh, the 7 comes built into a hard case, you know, these kind of cool vintage features. If you have like a small apartment and you can't get a piano and you want a keyboard and you have a little bit of a sense of style, you would probably want something like the Korg SV-1 or the 7 to just look very cool and vintage in your living room. I would say the 7's definitely got better sounds. It only has the Krumar and GSI piano sounds. No organs on the Krumar 7. No synths, which is something I didn't get into, but there's a very good synth on the Gemini. But, of course, if you like Clavinet and Wurlitzer, uh, that would be the one to get. Korg SV-1 costs, it goes for about $1,000. I know Korg doesn't really update them anymore, so the better sounds on the Kronos, you can't download here. I think the last time they released a new sound pack for it was 2015. So that's something to take into account, too, is that uh, if you really just want the Rhodes and the piano, they're quite good here, and you could get an SV-1. Otherwise, the GSI slash Krumar sounds take it all the way.